Listen to me and listen to me well. There are no jobs coming in South Africa. There are no jobs coming in South Africa. A lot of people need to stop listening to politicians. Politicians lie. Politicians lie because they want you to vote for them. They want you to vote for them because that's how they have access to tax. And that's how they have access to salaries for themselves. But they're not realistic. And they're not honest about what they can and what they cannot do. Politicians will never tell you, we cannot do this. They will lie to you and they will sell you dreams. That's the problem. There are no jobs coming. In South Africa today, we've got about a 52% unemployment problem. 52% of people that are able to work, not children, not students, not old pensioners, people that are able to work, 52% of them have no jobs. Of the kids that have gone through matric, gotten their matric certificate, gone to tertiary and gotten their diplomas or their degrees, 40% of them have no jobs. So you can go through 12 years of schooling plus four years of tertiary education and still have no job 40 percent in the world we live in today we're dealing with technology we're dealing with automation that means some of the things that human beings used to do before are now being done by machines by robots if you look at artificial intelligence that's still coming in the country that means there's a chance that when you call a bank when you're calling your cell phone network operator when you're calling any other service provider you might be speaking to a machine You'll be speaking to what they call algorithms, which are codes that are put into a computer such that when someone speaks, those of you that have phones that have voice recognition, you can speak into your phone and can type out what you're saying, or you can send a voice note and your phone can respond back. You're going to be speaking to a machine where you say, look, I'm looking for this help. And a robot will speak back to you, sounding like a human being, which means people that are in call centers, people that are in the services industry are still going to lose jobs. There are doctors in the Eastern Cape in South Africa that don't have jobs because there are no vacancies for them. There are nurses that are unemployed. There are chartered accountants that are sitting at home without jobs. These are things I'm telling you because I know them. These are facts, not what politicians are selling you. There are no jobs coming. So what's the solution? The solution is that number one, you need to become realistic. You need to stop listening to politicians and you need to rewire your mind around where you get your education and information from. Stop listening, stop reading headlines, stop listening to people that are selling you dreams and be honest. Look at yourself, look at your family members. Many of you have got immediate and extended family members that are jobless. Some of them have degrees, but they're jobless. That should tell you something. Look at the people you went to school with that are jobless. That should tell you something. So what do you need to do? You need to first and foremost, if you're living in a major city that is not your home, move back home. You don't have the money, you can't afford rent. You're struggling, you're living on debt, you're constantly begging people for help. Move back home where you have parents, where you have other family members, where you can live rent-free. Minimize your life. Stop living like you're rich. Stop going to restaurants. Stop spending money on your girlfriend and your boyfriend that you don't have. Stop drinking excessively. Go back to the basics. Eat basic food. Stop drinking excessively. Stop smoking excessively. Stop gambling. Stop living on sports betting and forex trading because it's not making you any money. You're chasing dreams once again. You're lying to yourself. Move home. Minimize your life. Wear secondhand clothing. There are places that sell really, really good quality secondhand clothing. You wash that, you put stays off. The, it smells and, and feels great. It's cheap. Live off basic foods. Don't eat a lot of meat. More vegetables. More fruits. Cheaper. Go back home. Think. Can I get a job? Wait, apply, speak to friends about getting you interviews. If you can't, try and see what few skills you have where you can sell the skill or try and find products that you can sell. Can you sell Herbalife? Can you sell Avon? Can you sell Justine? Can you cut someone's hair and be a hairdresser? Can you style hair? Can you wash cars? Can you cook and do catering or, 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 or offer plates that people can buy? What skills do you have? If you don't have skills, what skills can you acquire? Can your mom teach you how to bake so that you can sell biscuits or cakes, for example? Can your dad teach you how to fix cars so that you can tell people, guys, I can fix your car for this price. I can service your car, etc. But think and have a clear mind knowing you don't have to worry about rent. You don't have to worry about food. You don't have to worry about the pressures of trying to live a fake life. Sometimes you have to get off social media. Some of you are struggling psychologically because you're on Instagram every day 
and you're watching your friends and other celebrities living their best lives, much of it is fake, but you yearn for that. And it's priming your brain to want that. You want to get the latest Batu or Drip sneaker. You want to go and watch some, um, some concert. You want to go and eat at some restaurant. It's not for you. You can't afford it. You don't have the money. You don't have the budget. You don't have a job. So go home and relax and breathe. If you're, if you're religious, if you're spiritual, go to wherever your source of belief is. Go to church. Speak to your pastor. Get counseling. Speak to your guru. Read books. Just refresh your mind and watch healthy stuff on TV. Not this commercialized shit that's constantly trying to sell you stuff. Watch good documentaries. Watch stuff that can build you. Podcast, Joe Rogan. Listen to uh, Candace Owens. Listen to Killer Mike. And just, and just fix your brain and let it breathe. For other people, they need to move back to rural areas, to villages. And once you're there, the land is cheap or free. Build yourself a mud hut or a shack. That is what you can afford. Yes, you're living in a flat now that's 6,000 rand a month. You can't afford that and you're wasting money. Move to the villages. Build yourself a mud house. Build yourself a shack. Begin working the land. Learn. You don't, you don't know how to grow food. It's fine. No one taught you. Find people that know that and learn. Find a way to plant seeds. Water them. Put manure and fertilizer. And watch those seeds grow. So that you can feed yourself without relying on money and grocery stores. Once you have more than you normally have, you can begin selling it to other people. Go down to a basic phone. Do you really need to be on WhatsApp and YouTube and all those things every day? Maybe not. Go back to the basics. There are no jobs coming, guys. What you guys don't understand about business and the economy is that it's like a Bafana Bafana soccer match. With the Bafana Bafana, there's 11 guys on the field and some reserves. 11. 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 19. 11 guys on the field and some reserves. They have a team that works for them. The team doctor, the team... Um, coach, um, the team manager, uh, the team therapists, um, the team uh, physiotherapist, etc. They have a team. Then they've got other guys. Safa, uh, the guys at SAPC or, or multi-choice DSTV, the guys that do their marketing, the guys that design their kit, the guys that... There's a whole team around them. Those people maybe come up to like 200 people. 11 guys on the field, 200 people that are support staff. And then you've got the rest of the 50-odd million South Africans that are watching. This is outside of the maybe 90,000 people inside the stadium watching them. The business and the economy is very similar. You have one pick and pay. You have one shop right. You have one Woolworths. You have one spa. You have one choppies. You have one Cambridge. You have one macro. You have one game stores. It comes up to about 11. Then you've got the support staff that work at these businesses. The cashiers, the security, the cleaners, the suppliers, the... Those might come up to maybe 200,000 people. 11 stores, 200,000 support staff. And then you've got the rest of the 50 million South Africans that have to buy from them. What am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that to make money in business, you need to be making money alone while everyone else is either support staff, which is a small group, or is buying from you. And in South Africa today, we're not even buying local. We're not buying from stores that are South African where you know that if I give this shop one rand, that one rand will, will create a job for a South African. That one rand will buy supplies from a South African supplier. That one rand will pay tax to South Africa. And that tax will go to schools and clinics and making sure that it creates jobs and it creates roads and all these things for South Africans. But the money stays here. And then once we have enough money and we're doing well, we can take the excess, just like I was saying in the rural villages, with your produce, we can take the access and begin exporting it to Asia, to Europe, to the Americas, to Australasia at the bottom. We can do that, but you guys are not doing that. The clothing you're wearing is imported from China. Some of the stores you're buying from are Indian owned. Some of the stores you own are European owned. BMW, Mercedes Benz, those are not, those are not local brands. When you buy from McDonald's and KFC, that money is going to America. When you wear Nike, Adidas, your Yeezys, these are brands that are not local to South Africa. You're not buying from local stores. You're not creating jobs locally. That rand that you buy, you used to buy from McDonald's, from KFC, when you buy a Nike, when you buy whatever, that money is going overseas to create jobs there. A lot of our banks today, Standard Bank has got a, a stake that's owned by China. APSA used to be owned by Barclays, which is from the UK. Uh, some of our banks are not even 
majorly South African owned. Some of your retail stores are not locally owned. Some of your mines are not locally owned. Some of your farms are not locally owned. They're owned by foreigners, which means a lot of this money is being sucked every single day, going to make Europe rich so it can be first world, going to make America rich so it can be first world, going to make China rich so it can be first world. Your Samsung phone, like the one I'm using now, it's making South Korea rich. The Hyundai, the Kia that you're driving, it's going to make South Korea rich. The Huawei that you use, the iPhone that you use, these are not local brands. We've got a local brand like MobiCell. If all of us use MobiCell, we could create jobs here. We could build our economy, but we're not doing that. The jobs are not coming. You guys are not going to be able to buy local things. You guys are so psychologically messed up that you don't understand the, the whole concept of money flow and cash flow. And sadly, you listen to politicians. Your politicians have shares in some of these companies. They want you to buy from them. Some of your politicians are captured and owned by foreigners that give them money to make sure that they get you to buy from those businesses. Yet our president, Cyril Ramaphosa, having a stake in McDonald's, making sure that South Africans are buying from McDonald's, sending that money to America. That's wrong. That's wrong, guys. We need to be supporting fully local and we're not doing it because the jobs are not coming. So you need to begin pivoting. Try and look at yourself as an individual. Forget the rest of the nation. You're not me. You're not a politician. You're not a leader. You're not a business. No one is paying you to worry about the rest of the nation. And look at yourself. I'm Penwell. Am I working for me? Am I working for my family? What is my family doing? Can we come together, the five or ten of us? And can we share skills? Can we share knowledge? Are there products we can go and get and sell? Or are there products we can make like food? We can make clothing. And then sell them and get our extended family involved. And get our communities involved. And then from there say, we are proudly local. We proudly support ourselves as a family. We are creating jobs for ourselves. Afri Forum and other Afrikaans groups are looking out for themselves. They build businesses and invest in local business, Afrikaans businesses for themselves. The Jews in South Africa are doing the same. If it's not South African Jewish businesses they support, they support Jewish businesses in Israel. The Indians are doing the same. The Chinese are doing the same. The black Africans, unfortunately, are lagging way behind. No plan, no vision, no idea, no pulling of funds except for stock fells, but the stock fell money ends up at the same Asian-owned business, ends up at the same China mall, China city, ends up at the same supporting politicians that don't care about you and only care about themselves. And it's time that you guys wake up. Please understand, guys, jobs are not coming. At some point in the future, something may need to be done, maybe killing the poor and hopeless because no one's going to be able to employ them. They don't have any skills. They're not willing to move back to the villages. Instead, they want to live in squatter camps or sleep under bridges and end up turning to crime because they get so desperate. Unfortunately, sometimes we, we, we may have to kill those people because you guys refuse to make the important decisions required today to change your future. We need to completely dismantle the schooling system because school is no longer educating kids practically. You go to school for 18 years, 18 to 25 years. You don't know how to fry an egg. You don't know how to plant tomatoes. You don't know how to service a car. You don't know how to cut hair. You don't know how to create a product. You don't know how to make clothing. You don't know how to bake. You do not know how to make money. You do not know how to take a product and export it to another country and bring money in. You have hollow education that can do nothing. Nothing but get you into tertiary. And after tertiary, you then have to beg for a job for another company because you do not know how to create value and extract value for yourself, which means your education has been hollow and useless. And a lot of the tech, you guys are talking about technology will create more jobs, not for South Africans. A lot of your banks, I know this firsthand, a lot of your banks are outsourcing their call center work to India. A lot of the coding work is outsourced to China or South Korea or America or Europe. The jobs that you're looking for, the robots and the gadgets and the phones, they're not creating jobs locally. We're losing jobs, 52% unemployment, 40% graduate unemployment. And if you as an individual do not take action and minimize your life and move away from the city and go home and sit with your family and plan and find better leaders. If you do not know how to think for yourself, because thinking is very hard. If you do not have a plan for yourself and you don't know what to do, find better leaders. If your pastor is not helping you guys grow your own food, not teaching you how to run business, stop following your pastor. If your politician is not helping you get jobs, not helping you grow your own food, not helping you build your own homes, stop following that politician. Go and find real leaders. 
Find the people in your neighborhood that are running businesses, that are creating value. I want to work with you. I want to work for you. Tell me what to do. Tell me how I can add value so that I can live well and, le- and keep the money local and make sure that we're building our nation and our community and our family. This is Penuel the Black Pen, and this is a call to action for you today to make a change so that your life can get better. Love you guys very much. Cheers.